In this presentation, we're going to talk about the concept of aliasing, which can occur when you digitize a continuous time signal. And we'll also talk about how to use an analog low-pass filter to prevent aliasing. So the aliasing problem is um, if we digitize an analog input signal, we can have uh, a sample data record that can be, be produced by signals other than the one we're trying to measure. Uh, those signals we refer to as aliases. So here's uh, an example of a, a 1 hertz waveform and a 4 hertz waveform um, sampled at a rate of 5 hertz. These two waveforms, these two sinusoids, have the same uh, sample data record. We would say that the 4 hertz uh, waveform in the uh, is an alias of uh, 1 hertz, assuming 1 hertz is what we're trying to measure. More generally, the aliases of a signal we'll call F sub A are uh, equal to n times the sampling frequency uh, big of F sub S plus or minus F A, where n is an integer um, and F S, as we said, is a sampling frequency. So we can um, look at the uh, aliases of FA, our signal of interest. Um, aliases, the aliases being FB through FG, and they're equal to integer multiples of FS plus or minus FA. Uh, to, re to remember this, uh, we can take a completely folded spectrum um, where everything folds between DC or zero and half the sampling frequency and take a pin and prick it through that uh, folded spectrum at uh, frequency FA. And then as we unfold uh, the spectrum, uh, the hole where we pricked uh, that folded spectrum will reveal uh, the other aliases of FA, the FB through FC. And as we can see in this chart, we've uh, partially unfolded the spectrum and when we, when we completely unfold it and create a frequency axis it shows us uh, um, clearly the aliases of, uh, the, of our signal of interest FA uh, shown on the frequency axis. So this is how I remember uh, the aliasing uh, formula um, graphically depicted in, in this way. Aliases are particularly insidious because once we've sampled data uh, with aliases, it's impossible to reconstruct the data unless we know exactly and precisely what the aliases were um, when we recorded. So there's no amount of analysis or, or post data um, processing that we can do to separate the signal from the aliases. Fortunately, we have the sampling theorem uh, called the Nyquist theorem or the Shannon sampling theorem. And it states that if a function of time uh, contains no frequency higher than half the sampling frequency, then it is completely determined by the uh, sample data record uh, with a sampling frequency of F sub S. So to restate the sampling theorem to emphasize aliasing. Sam sampling theorem states that the sampling frequency must be at least twice the highest frequency of interest and that if any spectral content in the signal exists higher than half the sampling frequency you need to sufficiently attenuate it prior to the digitizing process or it will corrupt the signal we're trying to measure. So that second part really defines the the need uh, for an anti-aliasing low-pass filter to attenuate signals that exist higher than half the sampling frequency. So in our block diagram of our digitizer, we now have an anti-aliasing filter on the front end that will sufficiently attenuate any spectral content in our analog input signal, F sub T, such that uh, it will not alias and corrupt our, our in-band measurement. So the ideal anti-aliasing filter would look like a brick wall. It would have a 
perfectly flat passband at the cutoff frequency it would have infinite attenuation slope uh, where it reaches the stop band at half the sampling frequency and then has infinite attenuation uh, above half the sampling frequency. <coughs> In addition it would have phase that varies linearly with frequency. However such a filter is not realizable. So to do a uh, realizable filter we have to have a transition region as we've seen in the filters we've studied. Uh, that's a finite uh, attenuation slope from passband to stop band. Uh, the passband may have uh, uh, some amount of atten attenuation as you get close to the cutoff frequency. And then the stop band itself also has a finite amount of uh, attenuation. So in order to deal with the uh, practical anti-aliasing filter uh, in that it doesn't have an infinite attenuation slope, a sampling frequency higher than twice the highest frequency of interest will be necessary. So using a practical anti-alias filter, um, how do we choose the cutoff frequency to achieve uh, the maximum attenuation of aliases or the required attenuation of aliases for a given sampling frequency? Well, looking at the process of aliasing in the frequency domain, the sampling process creates images of the the baseband spectrum that are replicated at multiples of integer multiples of the sampling frequency and those images uh, where they fold back into the baseband image is where aliasing occurs and and that is uh, happening in the shaded region of this diagram we can see aliasing uh, occurring uh, in the transition region of uh, the signal at baseband so the first method um, for setting the cutoff frequency of a filter relative to the sampling rate of the digitizer would be to allow for aliasing to occur in the transition region of the filter. You might choose this method when you're doing spectral analysis or FFT analysis. You're only interested in the spectral content of the signal from, in this case, DC to the cutoff frequency F sub C and the fact that aliasing is occurring in the transition region is not going to spoil that analysis. So what we're attempting to do here is um, provide the minimum stop band attenuation of the filter, make sure that the aliases in the signal region DC to FC are attenuated by this minimum stop band attenuation. So graphically we can write an equation. We set half the sampling frequency equal to the cutoff frequency plus the stop band frequency minus the cutoff frequency over 2. And that yields um, setting the cutoff frequency equal to the sampling frequency divided by 1 plus omega, or what's called the shape factor of the filter. The shape factor of the filter um, defines how sharp or selective that filter is. A shape factor of 1 would be a perfect brick wall filter. Uh, a shape factor greater than one is what practical filters require. As an example, uh, the LP8F flat mode filter has a, a ratio of the stop band frequency to the cutoff frequency of 1.77. So omega sub s uh, for that filter would simply equal 1.77. The second method uh, does not allow alias is to fold back in the uh, signal region nor uh, in the transition region. Uh, all aliases are attenuated by the minimum stop band attenuation of the filter. And this condition uh, says we need to set the sampling frequency over 2 equal to the stop band frequency. That yields setting the cutoff frequency to uh, the sampling frequency divided by 2 times the shape factor of the filter. Precision Filters publishes graphs uh, for our filter characteristics that we offer and those graphs include uh, th this graph which shows attenuation of aliases versus the, the sampling frequency. This graph uh, is for the LP8F flat mode filter and we can use this graph um, to help us set the cutoff frequency um, to obtain 
um, the required attenuation of aliases in our signal band. These graphs assume method one that we uh, just discussed. So we're allowing aliasing in the transition region of the filter. So to use this graph, um, we introduce an, another concept, um, alpha, which is the attenuation at the highest frequency of interest. In our prior slides, we assumed that alpha was 3 dB, that our signal um, ranged from DC to the cutoff frequency. But that may be too much attenuation for us to handle, and we may want uh, less attenuation of our signal um, than 3 dB. But let's suppose we want 3 dB. So we'll, we'll say alpha equals 3 dB. Um, and we need 80 dB of min minimum attenuation of aliases. From, the, from this chart, we can see that we need to sample at uh, 2.77 uh, times uh, the highest frequency of interest, or the cutoff frequency in this case. That jives with wh what we talked about uh, a few slides back. You remember that we said that the LP8F had a shape factor of 1.77, and we needed to set the cutoff to 1 plus the shape factor of the filter. If we required only uh, 0.1 dB attenuation of, of the highest frequency of interest, uh, and say 50 dB um, minimum attenuation of aliases, then we look on the 0.1 dB curve um, on the y-axis 50 dB, on the x-axis we drop a line down, and we need to sample roughly at 2.82 times the highest frequency of interest. So you can see that um, a requirement of less attenuation of the highest frequency of interest is going to drive higher sampling ratios. Now, um, this particular chart uh, shows a comparison of sample rates required for different filter types, the LP8F and LP4F, the 8 and 4 pole flat mode filters, and then the 8 and 4 pole pulse mode filters. And you can see uh, from this chart that if we want no more than 0.1 dB attenuation of the signal, it drives a sample rate of 3.05 times the highest frequency of interest. We saw that in the prior slide. Um, for the four pole filter, flat mode filter, it drives a, a higher much higher sample rate because it's not as sharp, uh, 10.3 times the highest frequency of interest. And then the pulse mode filters get, get even higher than that. The 8-pole pulse mode filter is 20.3. The 4-pole is 66.3 times the highest frequency of interest to get 80 dB minimum attenuation of aliases and no more than 0.1 dB attenuation of the signal. If we can handle more attenuation of the signal, 3 dB attenuation of the signal, then the sampling rates come down, as one would expect. So going down this chart, the 8-pole flat is 2.75. 4-pole flat, 6.75, 8-pole pulse, 4.47, and 4-pole pulse mode, 12.8 times the highest frequency of interest. So this brief presentation provided us with a framework to set a programmable low-pass filter up given its uh, shape factor or selectivity. Um, to guard against aliasing, and we provided two different methods, one that allowed uh, folding in the transition region of the filter and one that did not. This methodology will work for any data acquisition system, be it a successive approximation converter or an uh, oversampling converter such as a sigma delta converter. Should you have any questions about this material or need any help setting up your filter to guard against aliasing, please give us a call at the phone number listed on this slide. Thank you.